All right, here's a tutorial video for getting a uh, topography set up uh, specifically for that Ford Field Park project. And so um, to kind of show you first off a couple things, um, this is kind of where I'm currently at. So there's two ways you can do this. Um, and I'll show you mainly one of them. The other one, uh, there's already a tutorial video set up for that. Uh, but I can help you with that one if you're still having some trouble. Um, so one option, the fastest option, but uh, sometimes actually harder to work with is using CAD Mapper. Um, so what CAD Mapper does is it's a it's actually a web-based program, and it takes a um, an image <clears throat> from a, a map. And so in this case, you know, I have it zoomed in on Ford Field. You can see it even pulls you know some of the buildings in the area and some of the topography with the roads. Um, but the tricky part here is that it doesn't do a perfect job. And uh, you can see it is actually gets kind of messy. Um, I did use that though for the site plan, so you can get some of the views here of the site. But um, like I was saying, it is a little bit harder to customize based on that. And so uh, if you want to use this as an initial template to work off from, it's not a bad way to go. But uh, personally, I rather build mine from scratch. And so uh, that's probably what I would recommend for you guys. So I'm going to close out of that CAD mapper version. Uh, it does have some perks to it in terms of it being quick and giving you the buildings and stuff, but if you were to build it from scratch, uh, which is essentially I use a Google uh, Earth image, uh, so you can see that in the back. The one I use actually is from a zoning map, and so that's why you have the yellow lines there, uh, but that's where I kind of use that as an outline, and I trace out my uh, Ford Field Park shape. You have some of the roads there, and then this is a little bit better for customizing, um, so especially if you plan on making some changes, you want to add features to the actual site, uh, then this is kind of a good option to do that. And so that's what I'm going to walk you guys through coming up next here. This is what I, at least what I use. Uh, again, it's still not perfect. Um, I, I haven't found necessarily a better way to do it though. So this is just what I would recommend uh, for this particular part of the project. And here's kind of a 3D view. And ultimately you can get you know some 3D views set up like this. This is just... Uh, an example, like I said, not perfect, but uh, I think it's a little easier to try to customize and make it your own. And so this is what I will show you guys how to do next. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is actually go here to Google Earth. So uh, you can just search it on Google, or if you want, type it right into google.com slash earth. And then uh, you launch Earth, and it pulls this up. And then in the search bar, all, all I did was search uh, for Ford Field Park, which is 151 Griswold Street, Northville, Michigan. And then uh, I got zoomed into this spot. Okay, so just like usual on Google Earth, uh, there's not too much to it. You can scroll in and out. Uh, if you click and drag, it pans. And then uh, if you click the scroll wheel around, if you're in 3D mode. Um, so this is also a great way to kind of explore the site a little bit. So if you're interested in, you can still zoom in. Uh, if you want to rotate around, I hold down the scroll wheel and then um, move it around so you can kind of take a look at some more specific features if there's something you want to take a closer look at. Uh, Google Earth is a great option for that. So you can see, you know, here's the roundabout, here's the entrance off from Hutton, I think it is. Uh, there's the current staircase uh, that we'll be re remodeling and hopefully take, taking something here that we can make it a little bit more <coughs> inviting uh, coming from this downtown Northville area. All right, so first off, to get the screenshot, what I would be doing is, uh, first off, under Layers, okay, so under Map Style, sorry, I cha change this to Clean, so that takes off all the labels. Okay, secondly, I switch this to 2D View, and then finally, I click on this button to make it face north. Uh, I think it just makes the most sense, in my opinion, and then pan this around, so that's what you actually want to uh, get there. And then I'll grab my snipping tool and then simply cra grab a uh, image here. So I'll take everything from around here over, uh, including some of that Ford Field East into the street. Okay, so once you have this, you'll save it somewhere that you can find it again. Um, so I'll save it here. And just for the sake of ease, I'll put it on my desktop here. So this is my uh, Ford Field Park. Google Earth image and then hit save. <clears throat> now um, don't get rid of your Google Earth yet. We're going to come back to this in a second. Uh, actually while we're here I'm just going to really quickly do a couple things here. Uh, I'm going to change my 
um, readings. Right now it's set up to be reading in meters. And so if you click on the settings there, scroll down, and there's one here that says units of measurement, and we're going to change that to feet and miles. All right, I'll hit save. And now um, the kind of cool thing here is that on Google Earth, well, wherever my mouse pans over, so you can see right now I'm like over the baseball diamond. If I look in this bottom right-hand corner, okay, you see that number keeps changing. Right now it says 840 feet. Right? If I move it over by the baseball field, it says 793. You know, as I keep moving, it uh, goes up a little bit, 794, maybe 795 on certain spots. Right? So it's not perfect, but it gives you an idea. You know, the parking lot here, 794. Uh, over here by by LA Fitness, you know, we're getting over Ford Field East 793 uh, And then the big one would be the big jump if you go up start going up the stairs you see it jumps really quickly to um, You know 802 mm -hmm. all the way up till the street street level is 822 feet Okay, so by by the time you get to the street over here 822 compared to the field is 794 You know, we're jumping almost 30 feet. And so that's why the staircase uh, you want to keep in mind it should be going from about 796 to 823. All right. Uh, the other thing that we're going to be using this for in a, in a little bit is taking some measurements. So if you click on that measure tool, uh, right now it's measuring in feet, right? And we're going to get some measurements that will allow us to scale it. So for example, here if I um, measure out the sidewalk, right now I can see that that sidewalk edge is a total of, um, let me see here. Oh, sorry, I clicked out of that real too quick. Let's try it one more time. Click through through here to here. I can see it's about 215 feet. Okay, and we'll use that in a second. I'll show you guys that. Okay, so I'm um, going back to Revit now. <clears throat> okay, it's a similar process to what we've done before, but uh, we'll start. I'm going to start a brand new file here. File, click on New, and this is going to be an architectural template, and hit OK. Okay, so um, when we're building the site plan, you always want to start building um, on the actual site plan portion. I'm just going to move some of these around. Just give me some more space to work with. Okay, so these are just your camera views. This is where uh, the east view would come from, the north view, so on and so forth. Oops, that's not right. Need to zoom in a little bit, click and drag. All right, um, anyways, let me... I just want to give a little bit more space to work with since our site's pretty large. Okay, so um, now that I'm here, I'm going to go over again to site plan. And I guess I probably should have done that here. <laughs> My fault. Okay, so let's go ahead and just click and drag a couple of these. I'm just giving myself a little bit more space to work with um, when I get to the camera views and then being able to move them again easily a little bit later. Okay, and then one more view here. I'm going to click, just scroll back out, and let's stick that over there. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is insert that image that we uh, did the screen capture of. So I'm going to go to Insert Image, and I'm going to find where I saved that. I believe I did it on the desktop here. So let's go to Desktop, and scroll down, find Ford Field Park. Here's my image. Hit Open. Okay, so when this first loads up, the size of it is going to be, honestly, somewhat random. So, um, kind of just based on the size of your screen, I think is what it is. And so right now it's coming in at 333 feet and then 214 feet high. And so now to scale this out, um, we have the scaling option. Right now it's set to 240. Okay, And now, so if I come out of this real quick... And I'm going to quick take a quick measurement. So there's a measure button, and I'm going to measure that exact same spot I did before, right? So right right now it's set up to 43. Uh, looks like it's about 40, closer to 44. Okay, so 44 feet. So let's just assume it's 44, and then I'm going to need to scale this out. So it's, since it's 44 feet right there, in actuality, right when we did it in Google Earth. Um, when I did that in Google Earth, instead of 44, it was closer to 214, right? 
or 250, let's just say 214. So 214 compared to 44, I just need to figure out what my scaling factor is. All right, so then I open up the calculator, um, calculator here. Oh, let's open up over here. So then I'm going to do figure out my conversion factor. So it's 214 on this side. I'm going to divide it by what it was showing up on Revit, which was 44. So it looks like I need to make it about 4.86 times larger than um, the current size on Revit. Okay, so 4. Point, oh, I forgot the number already off the top of my head. Let me see here. Uh, 4.86. So let's go ahead and use that. It's not going to be perfect, but it'll get us much closer. Okay, so then uh, if I click on my image here, right now it says 240 is the scale. So I need 240 times. Bring out my calculator again. So it really should be 240 times 4.86. So I need 1166.4. So let's do that. I'm going to change this number to 1166.4. I think that was the number. Yep, uh, I believe that was it. So 1166.4. And now, if I go check out my sidewalks there, right, so I'll go measure this one more time. Okay, it's not perfect, but now I'm at you know 208 almost, and so I'm much closer to the correct size. Okay, and you want to make sure you scale that properly, or else um, when you go create your topography, it might be all sorts of crazy. Like I said, I just like to move those camera views outside of my image there uh, just to make sure I'm not clicking on them and getting things kind of weird. Okay, so now to actually create it, uh, I have to create a topo surface. So uh, to do that, I'm going to come over here to Massing Insight and Topo Surface right here. Okay, so the way topo surface works, you're going to place points based on an elevation, right? So these are based on feet, and uh, you can do it as an absolute elevation. I personally actually like to start things off at zero, and uh, just because we're not actually going to be comparing it to you know, actual sea level. Um, so right now, I'm going to kind of look around my site, and as I'm panning around the site, I see that you know the lowest number is really 790 something, right? So down here by the parking lot, 794. I think the lowest I'm really getting is around 793, kind of in the middle of the field. So I'm going to treat that kind of as my zero. And the highest I'm going to go is up here is 822. All right, so it looks like kind of up along the streets, 822, 825 maybe. Okay. Uh, some of these areas up here, 825. Okay, so to kind of simplify that, uh, I would start things from zero, and then the highest points I'm getting is closer to, you know, 8, 826, let's say. Right. So what I would be doing is as I find my way around, I'm going to simplify this a little bit. I'm going to assume that most of this area here is kind of flat. Right. So I'm going to kind of assume that my all this around the field is, is pretty flat, and I'm going to build it up a, a, to kind of create that hill. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and start off at the high points and then work our way back down. So at the highest point, I have 825, and it works down 823, and then maybe, let's see over here, I got eight, some 818s. All right, so I'm going to do a little bit of quick math. So if it's 820, get my calculator out one more time. Okay, so the highest points was 826. The lowest points down here was like 790, I think 794, something like that. So I'm going to say that at the highest, I'm going to go with 32, and then at the lowest will be 0. Right? So then if I come back over here, uh, I'm going to just start placing some points. And the first thing I'm going to do is change the elevation here. Let's change these to 32. Oops, okay, 32. Uh, hit Enter. And so now, wherever I click, it's going to start creating... Um, elevation points that are around 832. Okay, and so I'm just going to start clicking a few over here. And sometimes it's it's kind of nice. You can always change the number later, but just to kind of create a box around where you're going to be. Um, so I know you know most of my points up this way are going to be around 832 or around 32. Uh, go and kind of be going back and forth over here on this on this side. 
Uh, I'm actually looking, kind of looking for some flat areas, so 793. So these are more going to be closer to zero. Okay. And so then I'll, I'll also see over here, go back to my Revit, sorry. Um, change this now to zero. So you have to keep changing your elevation values. Uh, so over here, I'm going to say that you know, some of these points are leading more closer to zero. And okay, as I create this outer shape, you can see that it fills in all the topography right now. So I have all this would this would be assuming that it's all a downhill slope, right? But as I start adding, um, and actually I'm going to change my my view here a little bit. So if I click on these, let's go ahead and do that right now. I'm going to change this over here to wireframe. Okay, that way I can actually see what's underneath. So now as I go to go back to placing points, I know, remember, all, all along my the edge here should actually be really closer to zero. Right? So then as I click around the outside edge of the park, and you know, just for the example here, I already have all that almost zeroed out. And that gives me a nice, a really nice um, flat surface to work off from. And if I want to make some uh, additions along the way, then all I do is just add, you know, make some slight elevation changes. So let's say um, uh, over here, I've got, let's say I know it's going to go up a little bit on this side. So maybe I'll make these over here closer to four. Right? So just so I'm starting to see some changes in elevation. And uh, that gives me kind of just something to work off from and that's kind of how I'm creating my general uh, topo surface and now if I hit the check mark and uh, let's go look at my 3d view real quick switch over to default 3d view okay and now if I look at it from the side I actually see that I'm getting that nice big slope going up this might you know the park would be down here it's sloping up to the street and then I, I would just keep adding more points depending on if I want certain areas to be flat here, for example, for the road. Then I might add a few more 32s along that edge. Um, but that's that's kind of how we create that topo surface. And uh, if I go back to the site now, and I can even change this back instead of wireframe. If I change this more to um, shaded, for example, then I've got my, my earthy feel and then I can change it to grass, so on and so forth. Okay, so that's uh, the basic rundown, how I'm creating the topo surface uh, for, for Field Park using Google Earth.